Welcome back to the Indicator 13 Compliance Module Series, Module 1, Agency and Student Invitation and Participation. As a reminder, if you have not already done so, please complete the pretest now. Remember, you'll need your PPID number in order to complete the survey. Just to refresh you on the purpose of this series, the purpose of the Indicator 13 series or compliance module series is to enhance practices for writing compliant transition-based IEPs and to broaden the foundation for effective practices related to Indicator 13 of the State Performance Plan. This slide reminds you of what each module is gonna cover. For today's module, we're going to focus specifically on the CMCI or Cyclical Monitoring for Continuous Improvement, File Review Questions 246, Agency Invitation and Participation, and 247, Student Invitation to the IEP Module. The other CMCI File Review Questions will be covered in the later modules. Let's take a look at the compliance language in file review question 246. The language specifically is looking for transition services that are likely to be provided or paid for by other agencies. Is there evidence that a representative of any participating agency was invited to the IEP team meeting with prior consent of the parent? Let's dig deeper into agency invitation to the IEP meeting. Invitations must include agencies when it is appropriate for them to be invited. This decision is an IEP team decision. But also a rule of thumb is that an agency should be invited if they are likely to provide or pay for services for a student. And remember, we must have parent permission. Let's dig deeper in when to invite an agency to the IEP meeting. Some general considerations for IEP team members are that you should invite an agency if they're likely to provide or pay for transition services and only with parent permission. But also agency involvement is based on the student's individual needs. Younger students' involvement with outside agencies might be limited. And remember, agency involvement may vary by region. We want to make sure that the IEP team is documenting agency involvement in the present level section of the IEP under secondary transition. And as an effective or best practice, putting agency involvement as a separate bullet in this section is helpful because it can help the BSC advisor during the cyclical monitoring find information about which agencies were invited and or involved in the development of the IEP. Here are some sample IEP statements you might consider. Representatives from agencies were invited with parent permission, and then you elaborate on what was said or discussed during the IEP meeting. You may also say the parent refused to consent to inviting outside agency or personnel, and then you would still wanna provide additional information in the IEP in case the parent wants to access that service or learn more about that service at a later point in time. Or, you could also say, although the specific agency did not participate in the IEP meeting, the parents and or the students were provided with information about upcoming agency involvement, including contact information for someone within that agency that can help them access additional information. Here's another example of what you might include as a sample agency statement. Bob and his family were provided with information regarding the supports provided through the Allegheny River Intellectual Disability Services, or ARID, and the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, or OVR. Bob met with a supports coordinator from ARID in May of this year and now has a current open case. Bob is scheduled for an intake with OVR during the fall of next year. Both OVR and ARID representatives were invited to his current IEP meeting. Here are some examples of other agencies you may consider including 
We've already mentioned the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation. County Mental Health is available throughout the Commonwealth, but might be called something different, as is the same with some of these other samples on this slide. And this is just a listing of those that might we see more frequently. It's important to reference them in the IEP meeting. This will assist the youth and their families with that secondary transition process and making that bridge or connection to those agencies. Your local IU is likely to have a listing of these local agencies that may be shared with your youth and family. There may be some additional agencies available as well. So let's take a look at the compliance question number 247. Is there evidence that the student was invited to the IEP meeting at age 14 or younger if it's determined appropriate? Now we're gonna take a look at this from a compliance standpoint. We're gonna explore a little further. So first is that student invitation to the IEP meeting. That invitation must reflect that both the parents and the students were invited. And that's for students who are of transition age. You must also ensure that the correct boxes on the IEP invitation letter are checked for students eligible for transition planning. This information would be contained in the student's permanent file. In 2015, the requirement for a separate invitation sent to the student was removed. Two invitations are no longer necessary. One invitation is all that's needed, but the student must be listed as a participant in the IEP invitation. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This is an example of what the form looks like. And it will be important to remember not only to fill out the boxes that are related to transition planning and transition services, but to also fill in the student's name in the box at the bottom of the page. Having the student's name listed there ensures that that student has been invited to the IEP meeting. Anytime transition is discussed, a student and family must be invited. And then again, you'll be including that child's name there in those boxes. Anytime an agency is invited, you'll be checking this box for transition services, and then you'll add that agency's name into the boxes below. That's the end of our information about compliance for these two questions. Now we'll enter into our question and answer time. Thanks, Jackie. So we have a few important questions to ask here. First off, do we get parent permission to invite representatives from outside agencies? Yes, under the IDEA, parent permission is required. And does it have to be in writing or can be verbal? Well, it should be in writing and should the, the agency should be included in that list that we talked about at the bottom of the IEP invitation document. But a tip, here's a great way to make sure that youth and family are included in that transition decision process of inviting an agency to the IEP meeting. A simple email or phone call prior to the IEP meeting as you're planning that date, reaching out to them and asking them are there agencies that you would like to have included in this IEP meeting? That helps everyone stay engaged in that process. And it also gives families a better understanding of how agencies may be engaged in that participation in the IEP meeting. What if we have an agency like OVR coming in and speaking to a group of students regarding their services? Do we need to get parental permission? Best practice really should include notifying parents anytime an agency is going to be working with their students, but the requirement for parent permission under the IDEA is specific to inviting agencies to the IEP team meeting that requires parent permission. Also, you should be aware of any consent requirements outside agencies have with regards to working with an individual or groups of students. 
And what does the district need to do if parents refuse participation by an outside agency? So again, when we're talking about this IEP process, the IEP team really should document that an agency was invited, but parents have not given their permission for that agency to attend. So the team should also include why the agency may be appropriate for that student in the present ed levels of the IEP. It's also important to include contact information so that the youth and family can reach out to that agency at a later time if they, if they decide that that's a good route for them to go. A great tool to support youth and families to better understand agencies is the PA Connecting for Employment video series and the PA Secondary Transition Roadmap located on the PA Secondary Transition website. So we've been talking a lot about the involvement or, or invitation of agencies. And what if no outside agencies are invited to the IEP meeting because either the student is too young or no agencies are needed at this time? Sure, if the IEP team has decided that a student is either too young or agency participation isn't warranted at a particular time, they should really do their best to um, support that decision by documenting evidence in the present education levels that says why that service or agency wasn't needed at the time and when it might be considered and how a family might find more information out about that agency. Great, and if an agency isn't invited, but they can't attend, are they required to provide written input? Well, agencies aren't strictly required to provide written input for an IEP meeting, but it's very helpful if they can. If the LEA should still, um, the LEA should still provide that basic information about the agency in the present ed levels. Again, that contact information so that if families want to reach out at a later date, um, that should still be included there. Um, but the, um, the agency does not have to provide written information if they cannot attend. So now that only one invitation is required for both the student and the parent, what strategies could a district put in place to ensure that the student knows about the IEP meeting? Well, best practice would include giving the student a copy of the IEP invitation that's being issued to the parents and also explaining to them that they're a member of their team and that they're invited to attend their meeting. In addition, the IEP case manager or other IEP team members should ideally be working with the student to help them understand ways in which they can be an active leader in their IEP development and meeting discussion. And to round things out, since we've talked about when and how we're going to be doing these invitations, once we have them, where are the completed invitations stored or housed? Along with all the other legal IEP documents, they would be stored in the student's permanent special education record. Great, thank you. If you'd like more information about this particular topic, you may reach out to your IU transition consultant or patent transition consultant by checking out the secondary transition directory located on the patent.net website. Finally, don't forget to take your post test and you'll need your PPID number to complete it. Thanks for joining.